Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson, and this is part four of my Pathfinding in Unity tutorial series. In part three, I looked at setting up a simple non-player character that patrolled around a set of waypoints, courtesy of a navigation mesh built within a scene. It's pretty straightforward, but it suffers from a fairly fatal design flaw, in that it currently requires me to hardcode the list of patrol points into the patrolling agent's code via the inspector. It would be a touch more convenient if I simply gave it a random destination and then based upon where it ends up it can figure out where to go next. So in this video I'm going to rebuild the example in part 3 such that the waypoints themselves know what locations it can visit within a certain radius and then it can randomly select from them. So before I get into the code I actually want to show you the pre-built already completed example and just run through it. So if you remember from the previous video, we actually had a set of these red patrol points that were set up in the world and each of them became a valid destination. One of the things was that they then drew the red into the world to clearly identify where they are. Now you'll also notice that there's a lot of yellow happening right now. One of the reasons for that is because I've essentially added a sphere of influence to each of these waypoints. And what it means is that they can actually detect whether or not another object is within their distance. And as such, it then establishes what I would consider an adjacency list. It says, right, well, here's all the locations that are next to me. And then that allows the NPC agent to select from one of them. It's a very small uh, kind of incremental development of the preceding example in the last video, but it's enough to kind of give us a little bit of something that we can play around with. I'm going to spend the rest of this video just walking through this code and explaining what it does. So let's go into Visual Studio and take a look at it. So first things first, that I've actually embellished the original waypoint class that I used in part three. If you remember the waypoint class, it just had a debug draw radius that it would use in order to actually draw out the uh, sphere to dictate whether or not it was actually going to be visible on the screen using the draw the gizmo draw thing up here. So coming back to this, what I did was I created a subclass of it, which is a little bit more complicated. And it adds this connectivity radius and I set the connectivity radius to be around 50 units. And then what I've then got is a list of connections that it establishes. It maintains its own active list of any waypoint that it can connect to. Again, this is a very simple and crude example, but for many of you, this is probably more than sufficient for what you need to do. Let me walk you through how I actually build that connection list up. So I grab every waypoint object that I have in my scene. One of the things that I actually added in this video is that each of these waypoints now uses the waypoint tag that I've built in the engine. And then, what it says is, that, right, find every game object with this tag. We then create the empty list. And then what I do is I grab every single one of these game objects. I get the connected waypoint component. I double check that it actually has the connected waypoint component by running a, you know, does not equal null check on it. Because it might be that I tagged an object as a, as a waypoint when it actually isn't. And I don't want it to do that. And then I just run a simple if statement on it and I say, well, if the distance between this position and the position of the next waypoint is less than or equal to the connectivity radius, then cool, we'll just add that to where we are. Also, there's actually a very small condition here that's added at the end. Um, also to double check that, oops, oop, next waypoint does not equal this. What that essentially says is, see when you're iterating through this list, double check that the thing that you're actually looking at isn't me. You don't actually add this instance of the connected waypoint to your list of available connected waypoints because technically it is going to be within the range that you can connect to it because it's going to have a distance relative to you of zero, right? There you go. And then what I've got here is an Android gizmo. I've added in the draw wire sphere for the connectivity radius, which is yellow, which is why you've got this really ugly, horrendous, big yellow sphere thing happening here. And then down here, I've added one more method, which is really useful, which we're going to use in the actual patrolling uh, aspect of the code base. And what it does is it checks whether there is another waypoint for it to reach. A breakpoint there, because I was testing it at some point. Whoops, my bad. And so I say, right, well, give me another waypoint. And here's the one I was previously at. That way it doesn't try to, you know, send you back. So first of all, I did a couple of little bits of error checking just to be safe. Um, is the number of connections, the number of connected waypoints zero? Then I can't actually give you an answer. Sorry about that. And I return null. I actually get it to return as an error because I think that may be a useful thing to have come up in the console view when you're testing it. But at the same time, 
it just returns null and it goes, well, I can't give you another waypoint because there ain't any. Then the other thing it checks is, well, actually, is the list only one and that list contains, well, the place I just visited, in which case you've essentially visited a dead end. And then I tell it, well, you know what, fine. Then just go back to the one that you just came from because that's the only one you can reach from here. Otherwise, I then actually run a little do-while loop and I say, right, well, I'm going to create an index and then I'm going to generate a random number between the range of number connections I've got and then I will say, right, well, my next waypoint is actually going to be that item from the list. So I'm just going to randomly select one waypoint from that list and then I'm also then going to just quickly check, by the way, just keep looping this until I can guarantee that next waypoint isn't the same as the previous one. And I don't have to worry about it being this one as well because I already did it up here. Me so smart. And yep, if that's all good, then return the next waypoint. Awesome. And then looking at the patrol code, this is very, very similar to the example we saw in part three. However, the only thing, if you look at the, actually, if I go back to the simple patrol and scroll up to the top, you can see here that the patrol points are assumed to already be there. And then I just set a patrol index and set the destination. But that was because I actually had this list of patrol points that was serialized into the into the class itself. Now, I don't actually need that this time because I just maintain the current and previous waypoints that I'm using as part of the nav mesh search. So the first thing I do when I actually start up, and you can see here, so it's, is it going to squeeze in? Yeah, it is. If I don't have a waypoint, I find all the available waypoints currently in the scene. And again, I just use the find game objects with tag. If that number of waypoints is greater than zero, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly select one. Double check it actually has a connected waypoint component and no one's trying to screw me around. And if it does, then we'll just set the current waypoint to be that randomly selected one from the list of all available ones that are currently in the scene. And if it can't do that, it has a little fit and it complains. Debug.log error. Ah, failed to find any waypoints for use of the scene. Ah, but that's fine. And then providing everything has worked out fine, we then set the destination. Now, if I go have a look at the set destination code, the thing that's a bit different this time is that if there's actually waypoints to visit, what it does is it goes, right, well, instead of, like, if you remember in the previous video, what I did for that method was I said, right, well, increment the available patrol points. I'll change the patrol point before I set the destination. And I had to do that by incrementing or decrementing the index with respect to the list. I don't have to do that now because I only have this current active waypoint. Instead, I ask the waypoint, give me your next waypoint. And here's the one that I just visited. And then once I found one, I'll set the previous one to be like the current one. And then I'm going to set the current one to be the new one that I've just found. That way I'm always maintaining an active reference to where I've just been and where I'm going. Then I then do exactly the same thing as I've done before. I set the target vector off of the new waypoint that I've established. I set that destination in the nav mesh and away I go. This only results in a very, very small change to the uh, update method where here this is almost exactly the same as before the only difference is i've maintained a count of all the waypoints i've visited and yeah other than that it's almost exactly the same as before i just don't have to worry about the list anymore the, the update method is almost identical so with this fourth video complete we now have a simple nav mesh patrol agent it's nothing fancy, but it shows that just using the most basic of nav mesh tools allows for me to create an agent that can move around the space and do something interesting Starting in part 5, we're going to look at how to use more of the tools built within the nav mesh system. We'll be starting off with off mesh links, a means by which to have two different nav meshes from two different surfaces connect to one another. This is actually really useful given that nav meshes are typically going to be built from surfaces of numerous game objects in the same scene, rather than just one plane like I've done so far. So we need to know how to address that. This has been part 4 of the Unity Pathfinding tutorial series. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more game dev tutorials. Plus, our channel is supported over on Patreon. If you'd like to get access to our videos early, vote on new topics and get access to the original source materials, head on over to patreon.com forward slash tableflipgames. Thanks for watching.